The next time somebody offers you a seat, politely decline and say, no thank you, I'd like to stand. Why? Because standing more and sitting less just might help save your life. Welcome back everybody to the Dude Nurse Show. I'm your host, the Dude Nurse. Today we're going to talk about sitting. Yeah, sitting. Not dog sitting, pet sitting, nothing like that. Plain old ordinary sitting. <laughs> Why are we talking about sitting? Well, new evidence shows that people who sit for extended periods of time, despite the fact that they may go to the gym or be very active in other parts of their life, those who sit for those extended periods of time are actually at increased risk for an earlier death, as well as diabetes, certain types of cancer, obesity, insulin resistance, the list goes on and on and on and on. So we know that sedentary activity is not good for us. It's, you know, as far back as I can remember, you know, since time immemorial, uh, healthcare practitioners and nutritionists and personal trainers, all of those kinds of folks, even your parents probably, your grandparents are saying, you know, you need to get up and do some activity. Don't just sit there like a bump on a log, whatever the case may be. Um, well, as it turns out, they were, they were onto something. Um, as we know, sedentary behavior or lack of activity is not good for us. But what about people who sit maybe, let's say at their job, let's say, for example, maybe uh, you work in a call center or you're an inside sales rep, for example, and you sit for extended periods of time. You know, you're, you're on the phone, you're on the computer, work, 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 work. You may get up every two or three hours, or maybe every four hours, go to the bathroom, you know, refill that cup of coffee, whatever the case may be. But by and large, throughout your day, you are sitting, okay? Um, you're, you're, you know, nose to the grindstone. You're not getting up and taking those, those frequent breaks. That is really, really bad for you. Um, even if, as I mentioned before, even if later on you go to the gym and run for two hours, studies show that if you get up from your desk, stop sitting, get up, stand, stretch, move around uh, approximately every 30 minutes or so, your health will be better because of it. Now let's let's kind of talk about why. Um, there is a particular uh, protein, if you will, called LPL, which stands for lipoprotein lipase. And basically, what that is is it's it's a pretty important uh, little little molecule that helps with certain things like triglyceride uptake. It helps with glucose uptake. Uh, it also helps to uh, produce HDL or high density lipoprotein, which is actually the good cholesterol, as opposed to LDL or low density lipoprotein, which is which is the bad cholesterol. And there's plenty of research out there that says, you know, hey, we need to boost our HDL and lower our LDL. Okay, but you know, there's tons of medications out there. There's a group of medications called statins. Um, you know, your doctor tells you, hey, you have high cholesterol. You need to, you know eat better, exercise a little bit, and take these pills, okay? So we got the pills, we're trying to eat a little better, we're exercising when, when we get off work. But what are we doing while we're at work, okay? Most of us are, are, are sitting. Um, as an ER nurse, um, I welcome the luxury to sit down. Um, you know, for 12 to 14 hours at a time when I'm at work, I'm busting my hump, moving around, and very rarely do I get the chance to, to sit down. That's a little extreme. Um, I know not all of us have that uh, ability in our job. Conversely, some people get into their chair and they literally don't move the entire time they're at work. So I've seen some people, that, you know, heard stories from friends where they have their Keurig, they have a coffee pot, they have a microwave, they have everything they need right there at their fingertips so they don't have to get off their duff and go anywhere. And some people, I don't know how in the heck they do it, but they have superhuman bladders. You know, the the average adult bladder holds about 600 milliliters, okay? Um, a healthy kidney produces approximately 
30 milliliters uh, of urine per hour. Okay, so after a few hours, you know, my bladder starts to hurt. I've got to pee. But there are some people, I know you've seen them, um, they just, they don't move. They don't get up. They come in and they leave. That's it. That's all they do. They have their lunch at their desk, you know, and they just don't move. So, uh, pardon me. I, I digress. I, I get on my soapbox. I apologize. But when we're sitting so much, our musculoskeletal system is not very engaged to say the least. It doesn't require as many muscles, uh, working together to sit as it does to stand. Okay. So if you ever notice, um, whenever you're sitting for a long period of time, maybe you're, maybe you're on a, a long drive. Okay. And you start to get kind of sleepy and then, you know, common wisdom tells you to stop, pull over, go to the bathroom, get out, stretch, move around. That is what we refer to that sleepiness that you're feeling is called stagnant hypoxia. And in a nutshell, what that is basically, whenever we're sitting, not moving around, we're very inactive, sedentary, um, our blood flow is not at a, a, you know, a, a higher volume to adequately get oxygen to our tissues, okay? So we start to get sleepy, we start to yawn, and one of the thing one of the many things that our blood does is that it, it carries oxygen to our tissues so when you get up and stand and stretch and move around and walk around you feel a little revived okay you feel like you're like wow man this is like magical but it's really not all you're doing is kind of getting up and awakening your your muscles getting the blood flowing um you know it, it's it's not really magical well maybe it is i don't know but it's it's pretty basic science and so the same thing applies whenever you're just sitting for long periods of time at work. You need to get up and move around and get some blood flowing to, to those tissues. One of, one of the, the major uh, medical issues facing our country today is obesity. And with obesity comes a, a lot of other issues, uh, one in particular being diabetes mellitus type 2. Um, there's other forms of diabetes, but for all intents and purposes for today's show, we're going to talk about diabetes mellitus type two. Okay. And I'm not going to get too, too technical, but basically with diabetes mellitus type two, your body does not produce enough insulin. Okay. And, and one of insulin's main jobs is to get glucose into the cells where it belongs so that we can use that glucose for energy and, and so on and so forth. So if we are sedentary, there's other hormones and things that, that, are, that are at work or not at work behind the scenes, okay? And so, as I said before, even if we're exercising, you know, 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever the case may be, this new research is, is very compelling regarding the fact that if you were to just get up and walk around a little bit while you're at work, you know, every half hour, every hour, get up, move around, stretch, go outside, get some fresh air, um, you know, go walk up and down the steps once or twice, you know, do something. In other words, get your butt up and stop sitting at your desk, okay? So if we start to do that, it will, it will help us significantly in the long runs, there's been other research, you know, we do, there's always a lot of testing on, you know, mice and rats and so on and so forth. And one of the things that we've seen um, is that a, a, an L, L, excuse me, LPL deficiency leads to elevated triglycerides in, in mice and rats. Therefore, it can be extrapolated that it will also lead to the same thing in, in human beings, okay, which will promote obesity. Um, as I mentioned before, with not having that LPL, it will lead to insulin resistance. And basically, if your body's kind of resistant to insulin, it's again, it's going to elevate those the glucose levels. It's going to promote weight gain, um, maybe initially weight loss, but eventually some weight gain and you're not going to be as as healthy okay and so 
it's imperative that we get up and move around. Some people, some people think, man, you know, I'm on my feet all day. I never stop. I never get to sit down. I bust my hump for 10, 8, 10 hours a day, whatever the case may be. Good for you. I'm not saying that you're not going to be tired, but I promise you, you're going to be a little healthier. You know, all, all I say you'll be healthier, all other things uh, being equal, meaning that, you know, uh, you don't smoke, you don't drink alcohol in excess, uh, things of that nature. Okay. So what are some ways that, you know, that, that we can do that? Um, a lot of us have heard of, there, there's a lot of different, um, office gadgets out there. You know, we have monitor risers and, you know, reclining chairs and all, all kinds of things out there. There's some pretty cool stuff out there. One of the things that's kind of mainstream nowadays is, um, something called the Veradesk, okay? And I'm not promoting Veradesk. I'm not sponsored by them. That's just one of the most common ones. But but what am I getting at? Basically, a desk or a workstation, if you will, that you can raise and lower. So rather than sitting there, um, just you know, plop down on your on your hiney, you can raise that desk and stand up and still be efficient, get your work done, things of that nature, okay? Talk to your HR professional. Um, they're very big on, you know, uh, workplace ergonomics. You know, talk talk to your boss. Um, if it's if it's not in the budget, you know, maybe uh, opt for a, a cheaper option. You know, companies spend a lot of money every year on workman's comp type claims, and you know, just sitting there, uh, you can be you could subject yourself uh, to being at higher risk for, for an injury. And th this is also too, assuming while you're sitting, you're maintaining proper posture. And I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I slouch. I, you know, if my chair will, I can reach below and click that little latch, I'll lean it back and I go, man, this feels great. You know, so I'm, I'm not maintaining proper posture and a lot of us aren't either, but, but we're not here really to talk so much about posture. We'll, We'll save that for, for another episode. But keeping your body a little stronger and keeping those muscles more engaged it will stave off um, diseases and breakdown in, in the future. Okay. Um, so like I said, talk to your talk to your HR folks, talk to if you have a uh, an occupational health, or like I said, start start with your boss. Um, you know, I, I would recommend that, you know you approach the situation as kind of a win-win scenario. You know, I wouldn't storm into their office, you know, going, you know, my desk is a piece of crap. I need this $500 workstation, you know, uh, do a little research and, you know, uh, come up with some of the merits that you think and how this will benefit you, how will it make you more productive, so on and so forth. So that's just a little, a little tidbit. Um, again, with that standing desk, you can, you know, or, uh, changing the the elevation of your desk will will actually get you up out of that chair and get you moving around. Okay, we kind of talked about it before, but another tip is to take frequent breaks. You know, we, we th there's people talk about you know divert your eyes from the computer screen and all of these kinds of things, but you need to you know get your butt up and move around. You know, get up, walk and go get a drink of water. You know, like I said, go talk to a coworker, go get some fresh air. Go, you know, climb a flight of steps and come right back down. Do something, but get the heck up out of that chair, okay? If you're going to be uh, on a conference call or, you know, you're making phone calls, um, rather than just sit there, you know, it's slouched in your chair, stand up. Take the call while you're standing up, okay? Uh, you know, especially if it's just something that you just have to listen to. You know, stand up if you have a cubicle, whatever, move around in your little cubicle, but but do something, okay? Get your get your butt up. Now after work, okay, when you get when you get home, maybe even after you've you've gone to the gym, okay, you know, you you don't want to go home and just plop down in front of the television, you know, say from six o'clock to ten o'clock whenever whenever you go to bed, okay? You know, maybe set limits on these kinds of things. And you know, setting limits for your kids might not be a bad idea either because guess what? They will be uh, at risk for some of the same 
uh, disease processes that that we are okay um again with 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 televisions things of that nature the same applies to social media internet time all of those kinds of things i mean unless you're you know listening to the dude nurse show ha 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 um you know but this is something you can do and go for a walk okay put on those uh headphones and turn on the dude nurse show go for a walk i highly highly recommend that <laughs> just kidding but not really um another another cool thing that you can do is you know we've all heard of fitbits and um there's apps on all kinds of phones that monitor your heart rate and how many steps you've walked, how many flights of stairs you've climbed, uh, you know, how much water you've had, how many times you've had to go pee. I mean, these things are incredible, okay? Those are a really cool way for you to set goals for yourself and, and really reach them. Um, nowadays, they have these uh, where you can invite other people and can be in competition with them, you know, and say, hey, I can walk more steps than you in a day, okay? Um, and th that's another cool thing too. You can bring that to your to your work's attention. It's something that you can kind of make it as a as a group activity. You know, companies love team building activities, and they also love um, lower insurance premiums. So uh, this is something that you know can act, uh, absolutely help with with both of those. If you have a healthier workforce, less productivity is lost premiums can be a little lower, et cetera, et cetera. So these are just a few tips to get your butt up and moving. Okay. I know I've said that a lot during the show, but it's very, very important. Okay. Um, thank you for listening to the dude nurse show. I hope you guys have enjoyed it until next time. The dude nurse saying be well, live well.